Hey everyone, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you all the crafty goodness that I've been working on this week. Two things before we get into everything. Please stay all the way to the end of this video if you normally leave a little bit earlier. I have something that I'd like to show you at the end. It's something crafty, but a little bit different. And number two, I have a new phone. My daughter was so sweet, I didn't have enough memory on my old phone. And you can't just apparently add memory to something. You have to upgrade to a new phone. So let me know if this video looks a little weird. I can see my wrinkly hands really well, and it looks a bit bright. But I can't tell if the colors look a little off. I've recorded Friday's video already and this video. I'm not sure if there's anything I can do, but there might be a couple settings that I can change. So let me know if everything looks good or if I need to fiddle with the buttons. Since I don't have internet, I can't actually watch it to see what it looks like except for on my phone, which really doesn't help matters now, does it? All right, enough with all of that. Let's look at Friday's tutorial. You're getting a, not a sneak peek because you're gonna see everything and now you'll know what the tutorial is. I had a request to make can cozies. Boy, you can see those shadows over there really well. It's late in the day. I never record this late in the day, but I'm doing can cozies as a requested video. So here is the red hat ladies some seashells on gray and then you can see the rest down there they fold down nice and neat these are sewn all the way around so there is no velcro or anything like that this is a really quick project that doesn't take much material or supplies and you can whip out several of these in time for Christmas I also thought they'd be really great for things like fundraisers for school if you're making them for a Boy Scout or Girl Scout troop if you're making them for your children's football or other sports team Maybe a family reunion, put some embroidery. You can embroider the family's name on it. There's so many things you can do with this. As you can see, it works for soda cans and water bottles. I don't have a beer bottle to show you, but I, from what I understand, it works great for that. Remember when I do tutorials, it's either something I've made up in my head or something that I've researched and watched several YouTube videos. I usually watch as many YouTube videos as I can find, just looking for any little tips and tricks. This is such a simple project. I didn't have to watch too many of them, but I take a little bit from every video I watch, smush it all together and make a project for you guys. I like this fabric with all the old thread spools on it. They look like all wooden spools. Oh, no, there's some plastic ones. Look at this thread. It has a whole bunch of different colors on it. Very nice. There are lots of fun fabrics that I played with. I finished the Primitive Gathering Primrose Pincushion that was given to me as a partial project. It's all stuffed and stitched. Because this is wool and this is some other type of material, it's not 100% cotton, it's not a quilting cotton. I had a hard time stitching it close. So what I ended up doing you can see right there is I ended up whip stitching it, but I had a thread that worked really great and matched this color perfectly. I'm going to be putting this in the shop, but I recommend if this bothers you at all, that anyone who purchases it, you can always take a dark brown marker and just color that thread in right there. But when you look at it, if you set it out, I wouldn't use it as a pin cushion. I would put that down like on a maybe on a piano or a sewing machine or just on a little chair or somewhere decorative to just kind of hang out and look pretty. That means I finished the Primrose Pin Cushion, the Wooly Folk Snow Flurry Snowman. I still need to turn him into something. And I have the Sunflower Pin Cushion. And I'm mentioning this because I'm willing to send these to anyone in the anyone in the world. I was going to say in the U.S., but I can mail these easily to another country. I like to send them to three different people. So if anyone's interested, first come, first serve, just leave your name down below in the comments. You can send me an email, and whoever calls for them first and grabs them first, that's who I'll mail them to. But remember, I'd like to send them to three different people just to spread it out a little bit. I won't be sending them in the plastic for the most part. Depends on if it's going to be here in the U.S. 
these two can easily go into an envelope. This one I might have to fold, so you just have to be prepared and be willing to receive something that's been folded. It doesn't come with any of the supplies, but it does have all of the patterns that you can trace around and the directions. So again, primrose pin cushion, sunflower pin cushion, and snow flurry snowman. Really easy to distinguish between the three. Thank you so much for watching my last tutorial video and for leaving such lovely comments. These are the hot pads and the pod holders. It's the polka dot one. Now this one, as you can see, it has the binding folded over a little bit from the stitching line. When I stitched in the ditch here, my binding was too wide. I still need to work on that a little bit. And there's a little space in here that the binding's not completely filled up. So unfortunately, those are terrible things and I just can't put it in the shop. Ha ha ha. That just means I'm gonna have to keep this for myself, right? I really like this one. These two I will put in the shop. They do have similar situations. So just be wary of this. I'm like everyone else. I need to learn a new technique and figure out how it's gonna work for me. I've always used two and a half inch binding and now that I'm actually better at putting binding on things and I'm not hand stitching it down, now I find that I can drop down the two and a quarter like all of the professional quilters, the fancy ones, uh, you know, we're all just quilters. I don't know anything about professional or anything like that, but I think I can drop down the two and a quarter on my next ones just to avoid this. Now, will that affect anything in the pot holder situation? I don't think so at all. It doesn't affect the quality. It just has a little flap. I could go through and hand stitch it down if it really bothered me, but it doesn't bother me that much. And here's the purple one from the tutorial. Now this one I stitched to the back and I brought around to the front because I have gotten pretty good at that and it didn't have anything so there's nothing to flop around because the extra is right here. I've even done pretty good. I started back stitching two or three stitches in each direction on the corner. Well, I would go forward and back stitch and then back stitch and go this way. And I think that just holds this little spot down a little bit better. You still have an open area that you could hand stitch down or you could even stitch down it if you're good, but I don't think I would like that look as much. Cause of course, remember it's gonna show up on the back. Something about the colors that I love on the polka dots and that cross hatching, it just, I just like this one. You guys know I don't keep very many items for myself unless there's something really drastically wrong with it. But sometimes I've been trying to tell myself that if you really love something, you don't have to put everything in the shop because if someone loves that, you guys just have to tell me and I would make one for you. I might even be able to use similar, if not the same polka dot fabric. Those did come from my scraps. I do like how this one just happened to have all of the the big circles right along the edge. That was done without any thought process to it, so I think that turned out really great. It reminds me of like the big lights around a like a dressing room mirror. That's what I think of whenever I see that. Now these items will be going in the shop. I finished the hourglass projects i think i ended up calling them something like a christmas hourglass quilt oh yeah those colors aren't the same that i'm looking at i think i'm gonna have to find some type of a setting on it that there we go that's more accurate of the colors i have to do a little tweaking anyways because we're taking pictures to put things in the shop reminder of the back I did have enough of, can you see that little bit of a wood grain, white on white fabric? I had enough to make the binding for one and two quilts. I was really happy to see that. So there we go. Both of these are done and they are in the shop. So if anyone has been waiting on them or was interested in purchasing them, they are in the shop with their fun little diagonal quilting. Even with the rambling, I feel like I must be talking much faster in these videos. I take a breath and slow down. As I said, it's the end of the day. I had to mow the yard today. It was only 84 and it was a nice windy day versus the 95 and above we've been having lately. We have a 
tropical something heading our way this week. So before all that rain comes and all that wind comes, I wanted to make sure I mowed the yard. I'm hoping it dies down and just becomes an afternoon rain shower versus any type of a tropical storm with strong winds because this area definitely can't handle the water or the wind right now. It's been really nice. I've been driving around and I've been seeing every now and then you see a house that's getting a new roof put on. People are not a new roof. They're getting shingles put onto their roof. Those are the houses that don't need all of a new entire roof. Like my roof needs to be taken completely off and right down to the trusses. Those, the pieces of wood that go on a house like this do, 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 to form that roof. So mine needs to have all new plywood. I need to have an entire new roof. Where other houses, they can just take, they have this scraping tool that has, it's like, it's like a comb almost, but made out of metal and it only has short teeth on it. And they just scrape it along the roof and it just pops all the nails out. They go flying into your yard. You find them six months later when you're walking around barefoot or mowing. Yeah, sore spot from the last type of hurricane. So I had to replace my roof back in the early 2000s. So yeah, so they've been doing that a couple times here and there. I've seen some houses getting that work done. Nobody's getting any of the simple things like fences or the screened in pool cages that go around a pool to keep it safe from people getting in it and to keep the leaves and other debris out of your pool. I haven't seen anybody come here yet, so I'm still working on that. That's more of a talk to 12 people, fall through the cracks a few times, talk to 12 more people, get 17 different answers, and try to figure it out. You know how it is dealing with government agencies and stuff like that. So enough of that. Let me pick the scrappy word of the day, and then I want to show you what came in the mail recently. Your scrappy word of the day is fast because my brain is running fast my mouth is running fast and this video will probably be done pretty fast now for those of you that don't like crinkles i want to apologize in advance and for those of you who do like the crinkly plastic oh you're gonna love this because i have three packages of crinkle that i don't want to unpackage off camera and bring it back in i'm afraid i'm gonna lose pieces or anything like that so we're gonna open these together I receive several emails a day about companies that want to sponsor something, want me to show you guys something here on my channel. It's more of a benefit for them usually than it is for me. And I like to be very picky about who I allow to come into our community. The bread one wasn't actually a craft one and you don't have to make the bread. So that technically doesn't fall into those categories, but we do have to eat while we're crafting. So I thought that one might interest people. And several of you went ahead and signed up for it. So thank you so much. And I hope you guys enjoy your bread boxes. I try to always get some type of a discount code for you guys. So when a website that contacts me like this cross stitching one, when they contact me, I would like you guys to get a discount. So if you're interested in purchasing anything, then you can go ahead and get a little discount. It was very difficult to choose a kit from this company. I've seen and I've worked on stamped cross stitch progress. I love the stamped kits because I don't have to look back and forth to a chart. I can just sit there. It's like hand embroidery. You just follow the lines. And this one, you just follow the color. So when I do counted cross stitch, that's when it's just a blank canvas and you have to look at the pattern and then you have to figure out where to put the little X's and stuff for those of you that don't cross stitch. I don't mind doing little ornaments, but the big projects like this, I never finish. I'm hoping to finish these projects over the course of time. I'll put links down below in the description box to the company and I'll include the discount code. The discount is chronically05. I will put that information here. I'll put the links to the patterns that I chose to their main website. All of that will be in the description box. And then also in the pinned comment, I will put the discount code, how much it is, and a link to their website. So this one, I've always wanted to do a cross stitch of under the water ocean scene. I see this a lot. This is a very common image. You see this. I have some fabric with it on it. I've seen it in paintings and stuff like that. So there's a little look at that. It does come with your color code. So you do still have this to look at. Many times when I get the ones that are stamped cross stitch, a lot, whoops, upside down, sorry. A lot of the times they're a little bit off. Like the actual squares aren't in the squares to match up with the project. 
But when I was looking at this one, first of all, the pattern, of course, is perfect. You have all of your X's and all the little squares. This is like a good backup plan in case you need to see something clearly. It has your picture so you know what pattern it goes to later on. And it has your guide of what the symbols are and all of the little cross stitch, the floss colors. I almost call them flavors. I don't know what brand of floss they use. This looks like a pretty good floss. It has a nice little sheen to it. Let's see, oh, here's one. Home Idea Classic Art Treasures. Now this does come from China, I believe. It did not take very long to get to me. I totally forgot about it, thinking it was gonna take weeks and weeks to get here. And I'd have to double check when it arrived, but it was like seven to 10 days. It didn't take very long at all, if that. So this is some type of a brand over there. This is nothing that we have here. Home Idea Classic Art Treasures. So it has a nice little shiny sheen to it. Looks just like any other floss, six strands and stuff like that. I like that it already comes separated. Have you ever gotten those big hanks that where this is all tied up and you have to separate it? And then you have to figure out the colors. And when you have like 12 blues and you can't figure out each shade, you have to go by, okay, well, shade number 14 has two strands. So let me find two strands that are the same. So you don't have to worry about any of that. It's all right here. And then this one must need a lot of it because that's got to be the background, a lot of the, the different blue in there. So that is really cool. I like how that is already all separated. There are some cross stitch kits that are the counted ones that come like that. It has three needles, which is nice because how many times do we lose our needles? So this is like 32 inches long. So it's about eight inches tall. So that's a really nice size. Of course, you'd end up having to frame this and all of that. But let me zoom in and I wanna show you where the squares are in, this is Ada. So it's an Ada cloth project. When you look at each project, it tells you the count of the cloth that comes with it. Now, as you can see, this is everything that came in here. There is no instructions or anything like that. You have to already know how to make a cross stitch and to do all of these things like that. So there are no directions. I was a little bit surprised about that, but that's okay too, because every time I get a new kit, and it's got 12 pages of directions or something. I'm like, I don't need to know all these things over and over again. So this is a very busy section. Let me go ahead and zoom in here so that we can see what that looks like. See, each of these are actually on only their square. So it is printed so precisely. A lot of times it'll be like, on half of a square and you got to figure out should I do it green or should I do it this this red mark or what or look there's a yellow with a line in it should I put that there but each one is printed exactly where it needs to be when I first opened up I only opened up this one when I opened it up I thought that is amazing to have something with that many details to have it actually printed properly I guess that's what you can do with computers nowadays I hope all of the kits now look like that. So let's get this one put away and I'll open up the other two so you can see what they look like. This is a Harry Potter kit. Okay, this one has a threader and it's got that symbol that you wear on your ring. Again, there's three needles. These are stuck in a pom-pom. I don't know if we need that for something or if it's just there to hold the pins. I would have to guess we need it for something. You have all of your floss again on the card with everything that's already numbered so you know what's what. And then again on the Ada cloth. And this is the Harry Potter one. The picture is very blurry, so it's kind of hard to see what everything looks like, but you can see this one on the website. Again, I will link to all of these. This one does have a little bit of directions. Now this is one of those things that if you get this canvas wet, the design will go away. 
So after you're done, you can go ahead and usually hand wash it or spritz it or something. That way you can get all of this. These have, I see the word DMC among the Chinese letters that I don't understand. So there must be some DMC floss in here. But this is a powder you have to be really careful. You just can't get it wet. All of the yellow is probably that light green. That's why there is so much of it. And again, you have your regular pattern on paper so that you can go and double check and see if you got everything in the right spot, just in case you need to see something. It says right down here that once you're done, you're gonna soak this in water. I think it's about you know lukewarm water and it takes about three hours for the patterns to disappear. So maybe if you get it just a little wet, if you clean it right away, you might be okay. Plus you always have that to go from afterwards in case you have any issues. I saw some really nice Christmas ones. They contacted me after the hurricane, actually during the time when I didn't have any power is when they contacted me. So all of that time in less than a month, I have spoken to them back and forth, chose my items, and they've been shipped here in that amount of time, which is really good. And I've been holding on to this for a little bit because we had, I lost one of their emails and I needed to get the discount code again. So this one is a Halloween one. I did see some nice Christmas ones on the website. For those of you like me that like to do the stockings, but doing a counted cross stitch Christmas stocking might be a little bit too much. I think they might have had nine or 12 different designs. I saw a really nice one. There was a Santa Claus with a snow globe and then a Santa Claus with his best, his bag of toys and stuff. I thought those were really sweet. So this one's a Halloween Advent one. It was just before Halloween that I put in the order for it. Of course, there was no way I was gonna get this done before Halloween. There is a bit of a glimpse of it. I love the little Halloween with the haunted house on the bottom. I like advent calendars and I like the ones that are all like this because I don't want to use it as an advent calendar, but I like that it's all in one. And actually, if you're done with these and you can put them under glass or something, you can get like vinyl stickers that go and move from day to day so you can use it as an advent calendar and the appearance of keeping track of the days, not necessarily having any candy or anything with it, but you can always have a bowl of candy next to it as long as you can control yourself and your family that they're not gonna eat all the candy and just have one as they go through the days. So I like that the edges are pretty good. This is the salvage edge. They haven't done any type of surging on it. It's just your basic, oh look, we only have two needles this time. Three needles was really neat. I've never gotten three needles in a kit. I've gotten zero needles before, but I like to go through and basically surge the edge, overcast the edge, do something to keep it from fraying, especially with a kit like this. You don't want to lose too much of it because they don't give you a lot of extra room when you're doing kits. Some of the kits I've seen when you do the counted cross stitch, you're lucky if you just have barely an inch to go around it, which would make it really difficult to frame it or lace it or do any of that specialty stuff that you need to do to put your cross stitch in a frame. So if you wanna just wander to the website, check it out to see what they have available, to see what different designs there are. Again, I will put the link to all three of them in the description box including the main address and the discount code. The pinned comment will have the discount code and the main address. I receive a lot of requests to show games, like apps and stuff here on my channel. But while many of us do play games, I like to play a solitaire game. I have to put it down here because I don't remember what it's called. So I like to play that solitaire game on my phone, but I don't like to do the role play and the shoot 'em ups and all of that. And I also get a lot of requests for things for like photo editing and stuff like that. And I really don't recognize most of the names. But I thought it'd be fun to just check out these cross stitch kits, see what they look like, so that you guys aren't just shopping blind if you want to look at their website or if you happen to come across it. I think I've heard VIP cross stitch before. I did do a little bit of research and I haven't seen any complaints from any companies or any people about them. Everyone seems to enjoy the products. And now I can see why, because once they arrived, I can see how the quality, it's, 
the good Ada cloth. The printing on it is phenomenal. I can't get over on how nice it's printed and each color stays in its own, each individual square. That's just blowing my mind because I remember over the years struggling so much just trying to figure out which color goes where. I've done a lot of cross stitch for Rob and embroidery projects with tigers because he loved tigers so much. All of those stripes that end up being like stair-stepped and zigzag and stuff, those got to be a little bit crazy when you couldn't get anything to line up. Over time, of course, I learned that you can just pretty much put whatever color you want wherever and nobody's going to know if it should be two squares to the left or one square to the right. It's overall going to look fine, but as a newbie, it just takes a little bit of stress when you can't get anything to line up. So these will be really good. There's also smaller projects. You don't have to have something this large, but I think they will be nice maybe on a scroll frame or something like that. I'm not going to open any, well, I've opened it, but I'm not going to start anything until the new year. I have five or six projects now that I'd love to get done next year, and that's not going to happen with the size of these. I have a couple ahead of it, but I think we should start working on these sometime next year, maybe a live stream. If I can get my weeks under control, maybe we can do an extra live stream on the non-sewing days. We will see. I make no guarantees probably should finish the birdie stitches first. I am so close to that. Get that finished. I have the Santa Claus one that's half done. I'm not even going to even talk about the haunted house one that I'm doing on batiks. The list is just never ending because someone has always got something new and fun to work on. I would like to say never share any links with me. You guys share a lot of links with me and I love it and I appreciate it because I like going down that rabbit hole with everyone and finding new things to work on. So I'm going to let you go. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Watch for Friday's tutorial with the canned cozies. I ask you in Friday's tutorial if you would like me to also do a video about the Velcro version. This one, as I said, just slips on and off. There's no Velcro involved, but we can do that one also if you'd like to have that. For this one, if you want to plan ahead, you're just going to need some fabric and either batting or fusible fleece. There is no insole bright in this version. That would go in the Velcro version. So thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for hanging out all the way to the end. If you checked out these patterns, go to their website and come back and let me know which one you would choose. Not that you have to buy one or anything like that, but is there a favorite that you would love? Even if you don't cross stitch, you can still see the beauty in the patterns. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I am slowing down at the end. <laughs> I've talked too much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.